like 8 a.m. right now and um this is the only time I have to record this video. Hey y'all, it's Harry and I'm back with another video. Hello, my name is Harry and if you're new, uh, welcome. Welcome to the pirate ship. And if you've been here, welcome back to the pirate ship. Um Harry Hook's pirate ship. I am the captain. You are not my first mate. I don't got no first mate. Nobody is worthy of being the first mate. Hello, if you're new here. My name is Harriana, and I like to make content based off nostalgia and family and children's entertainment and all the issues that I find within those spaces, y'all. Um, if I'm not as loud today or I have problems like enunciating my words, y'all. Yesterday when I had lunch, um, I was sad. So I had got me some chicken noodle soup and I didn't want to wait for it to cool off because I was freaking hungry. And yeah, I burnt my freaking tongue. It still hurts and I'm having a hard time kind of talking. So I do apologize for that in advance if I mess up a lot of my words. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into what today's topic is. We are going to be debunking Dan Snyder. Um, my favorite pastime debunking the best that is in Dan Snyder shows and the most popular Dan Snyder show of them all Victorious because there's always something weird going on with Victorious like this show has so many freaking issues like it's good it like it's so close to being good and there's something weird happens in it but before we get into today's video I just wanted to throw out there that I have added a whole bunch of new stuff to my merchandise and I am super duper duper excited to share it with you guys I added over 30 new products um this video is going up the same day this is I'm having an end of the week sale the sale ends tonight at midnight this is going up on Friday uh, it's basically buy one get one 70 off on glosses. That's actually one of my most popular sales that I have. All buttons are buy two get one 70% off and then also pirate ship 25 for 25% off their orders. So that is enough with the self promotion and let's go ahead and get into today's topic. Y'all oh Jesus my tongue. So, as we know, Victoria's is one of those shows that's like problematic as hell, but for some reason we keep watching it because we're still intrigued into it. Honestly, Victoria's is one of the better shows. I low-key kind of prefer it over Drake and Josh to a certain extent, but anyway, let's continue because it's so damn entertaining like my sister watches it every morning and i watch it with her because what am i who am i about to tell my older sister what she can and can't watch so she likes to watch victorious like every morning i want to spend time with my older sister i sit there and watch it with her and it is so much more new stuff about this show that i just noticed because i have watched almost every episode of this show probably like 10 times in my life and rewatching them again, you always pick up something new. You always pick up something suspicious. And we're just going to talk about one of those things. I had an alarm set. Over the last few weeks, something about the show really just stood out to me for like bad reasons whatsoever. Because this show has a fat ass problem when it comes to just misogyny in general. But it has a really bad problem when it comes to sexual harassment. So it is always played off as a joke. And the main problem with this being played off as a joke is because this show is made for children. So anyway let's continue off as like a joke and this show is made for children as we all know and you really got to be careful with what you do when it comes to children's television and the kind of jokes that you put in there okay let's go ahead and continue and get back into it so let's go this is a problem throughout the entire series from when the series began and when the series ended and it starts like really early on like in the first probably like within three episodes there's a whole entire situation where Robbie and Trina and Robbie and Trina, their dynamic in the show has always just been them bickering back and forth with each other. And a lot of that stems from the fact that Trina doesn't like Robbie like he likes her. So he just kind of takes that out on her. I find that very weird. I have a whole entire video about how Robin Shapiro is trash. But early on in the show, Robin and Cena were scene partners. And if you're an actor, you understand what a scene partner is, okay? Sometimes you have very intimate scenes with them. They had a very intimate scene. And Robbie caught feelings. Those are the worst kind of actors. <laughs> But yeah, Robbie caught feelings. He came up to Trina one day at lunch, kissed her, and she got angry. And she had every right to. Yeah, he kissed her without her consent. She was pissed and she had every right to be. So basically, after that situation happened, Ro Kat came in and told Robbie that just because she was your same partner and y'all had chemistry then don't mean she wants you. And then next thing you know, Kat kisses him. 
cat kisses him to prove that she don't like him like that and it was just acting and this episode right here kind of like shifted the dynamic between cat and robbie in my opinion because after this right here he started to have a bit of an interest in cat and we all know how that went down yeah it's like a borderline obsession it's a borderline obsession it has also been implied that Robbie has done things to Kat that has made her uncomfortable because she told Jade about it and Jade got on to him about it. Like, I have a whole entire video about why Robbie Shapiro is freaking gross. I'm not taking back none of what I said in that video. I will have the link to it down below and I will mute my phone. I am so sorry. So oh, from him spying on Tori and hurting Trina and using his puppet to say the most out-of-pocket things and him taking advantage of Kat because he understands how naive she is, Robbie Shapiro sucks said that almost a year ago opinion did not change you can't change my opinion on that moving on we're moving back to trina trina went from being sexually harassed to sexually harassing somebody else and this happened when in the story beck and jay broke up beck and jay were the main couple of the series and basically trina always kind of took a liking in beck but it became it was confirmed that she actually had a crush on him after him and jay broke up because you know he don't got no girlfriend she could go after him and she would be doing the most like she would go out of nowhere to like throw passes at him and shit like that and i remember specifically that there was an entire episode where beck was best friends with Trina's sister, Tori. So next thing you know, she comes in the room and just sits on Beck's lap. And he doesn't really do anything about it. He's just like obviously uncomfortable, but he didn't consent to that. Mind you that Beck was never really mean to Trina. He just really tolerated her because she was always around. But like when him and Jay broke up, she was just doing too much. She was touching all on him, trying to sit all on him. And he was obviously uncomfortable with it. It even got so bad to the point where she even kissed him and she was going around telling people that they were dating. Trina has a lot of issues, y'all. A lot of Trina's issues really stem from her being extremely insecure and she can't handle the fact that people don't really like her. Trina sucks, but I also feel very, very bad for her in a sense. Also, side note, does anybody else find it weird in this show that a whole bunch of people within the main circle, the main six, they have all kissed each other? Like, does anybody not find that sus, okay? Anyway, let's continue. Let's go back. So I have to give this show its props because... You know, we gotta praise the show when they actually do right. Dance Lighter actually kind of do something right for once. Beck actually ended up getting back at Trina for what she did. He ended up playing a big prank on her with her friends and she ended up getting it good. So it was pretty funny. Y'all, I'm slurring like so hard over my words right now because my tongue hurts so bad. But she ended up, he ended up getting back at her for what she did because she shouldn't have been doing that shit in the first place. Anyway, Beck ended up pulling a main prank on her. And something that I noticed that when it comes to Robbie and Trina, when both of them were getting the consequences for their actions when it has come to sexual harassment, is that both of these are big issues, okay? But I'm not going to sit here and act like, like Trina was any better than Robbie because she was just as bad. But it's just when Robbie was out here being creepy, it was taken a bit more seriously. Because as Kat and Trina and Tori have made it clear to him that he was making them uncomfortable and that he was being very gross. Like even, like I said, Jade even got on to him about it. But when Trina did it, it was more comical if that makes sense. Like it was played as a joke. It was played for laughs. Well, Robbie was played for laughs too. As we know, this is a comedy series that has a really, really weird sense of humor. People actually got angry with him. Those were actual, natural, real reactions. But when Trina was doing this, everybody was a bit more calm in a sense. So it just makes you go like, and Trina did it and was done in a more comical sense and they weren't as harsh to her when she was wrong. So this just kind of goes back to that trope, that old trope we see all the time in Hollywood when a woman is being creepy and gross, it isn't really taken that seriously. But when a man is, it's then. And I don't really want to go too deep in detail about this part right here because I know the insoles and the insoles in the um, comment section going to be going to town with this, okay? I am not on y'all's side, okay? I'm just saying that both of these are bad and they need to, you know, suffer the same consequences, okay? It's called a double standard. Because I've seen this numerous times where it's always played off for giggles and laughs, where it's a woman doing things that be just as wrong as a man is doing. But we know if the roles were shifted, it would have been way, way worse because we actually saw this on Victorious, how when a woman was sexually harassing a man, 
it was just play for giggles and laughs but then when a man was doing it to a woman it obviously was like yeah you need to stop that and also this just kind of goes down to how the writers don't really take this seriously because women being creepy has just always been played for laughs and that's sad because it feels like it's not gonna change because i have watched some recent things lately where women are being creepy and it's played for giggles and you're just like no I know you're tired of having crusty ass lips. Wearing a mask all the time gives you no excuse. Head over to harryanahook.com. Oh, you don't want that? Well, she has a bunch of other things to choose from. Don't worry. Pick yourself up something super cute because you're like super cute and stuff. Dan Snyder is a very strange man, okay? Like, we know this. Sloan has very great videos about all the unsettling shit that's in his shows, okay? Like, aside from, like, the casual racism in his shows, this show has a big issue with misogyny, okay? And it's not just misogyny. It has a lot to do with sexual content, okay? Victorious is weird. Like, very weird. It is the campiest Nickelodeon show out here, okay? Okay? It is one of Dan Snyder's shows. This one is the weirdest, okay? He's okay. Henry Danger is pretty weird too. I have to give him his props to that. All that is sketch comedy, so they get to pass it being weird. But Victorious is just weird for numerous reasons because he stays putting kids in sexual situations and has so many sexual innuendos within the series, okay? And it's very unsettling. And no, I'm not sitting here saying that there shouldn't be like sexual into windows and kid shows because it's not an issue if it's done right situation a lot in fairly odd parents where timmy's parents would like you know do adult things and i remember there was a scene in danny phantom where she was talking about how she didn't want to play no checkers she wanted to do something else and i specifically remember like this one part of rocco's modern life that went viral on the internet Rocco's Modern Life is another, that's a whole other set of issues, okay? But it was implied in an episode where Rocco had a job, he was a sex hotline operator. It was implied, but they didn't come out strictly and say it. But Rocco's Modern Life, we gonna talk about that another time. <laughs> Y'all, I cannot believe that I am about to praise Miraculous Ladybug for something, but Gabriel and Natalie, Gabriel and Natalie, we gotta give them their props when they're due. And everybody knows me that Gabriel and Natalie are one of my favorite parts of Miraculous Ladybug. There's so many sexual innuendos within their dynamic, and it's okay because they're both grown, and it's obvious that they're both comfortable with each other. It's a problem when it's done in kids' television oftentimes because one, the kids are the situations and it's really done in an offensive manner. And it's kind of unsettling because so much of it was offensive and played for last and victorious. Like there's numerous, like, like I said, there are so many compilations here on YouTube about creepy moments in Dan Snyder's shows. And so much of them are rooted within sexual harassment and misogyny and sexual situations with children. Like it's very unsettling. Hey, um, live from the editing room, which is really just my office desk space that I have in the living room. But, um, it's, I kind of wanted to go a little bit more in detail about this part right here because I kind of felt like my uh, point wasn't clear. No way am I saying that, like, teenagers don't be in sexual situations like there's a lot of shows out here like you know euphoria and degrassi where like teenagers are like put in like sexual situations but those shows are not targeted towards kids so that's how they able to get a pass with it but that's like a whole nother problem um within itself because people don't seem to understand that there's more stories to tell with teenagers than just sex which is why I do praise um, children's media a lot because they tell stories about teenagers that are beyond that. But 
what I wanted to um, say right here was it's honestly really unsettling when it's like small kids, like kids that are like 12 and under when they're in sexual situations. That's very, very gross. And then I understand when it's teenagers and things like that. But when it comes to Victorious and like a lot of like the sexual situations, it didn't really bother me too much when it was like, you know, they consented with each other. Like the stuff with like Tori and Beck, it's obvious that they liked each other. But, you know, we had the things going on with Kat and it was obvious that she was uncomfortable. And some of the stuff that Jay did was very unsettling too. It's it's very tricky. It's very tricky. Like when kids are in kid shows when kids are put in sexual situations, it's usually like one is feeling uncomfortable and then the other isn't. So that's why it's an issue. But when they're both like you know kind of like feeling each other it's a whole nother thing it's an entire thing and also another problem with um kids television when it comes to like sexual situations is that a lot of them have to deal with adults like you know being like hitting on kids and what stuff because i remember that there was a whole pedo joke in um another dan schneider series called game shakers when it had to deal with um Macy Mason Candle his name is like Tanner or something he's on like um Cobra Kai but it was like a older man like admitting that he had he really liked the young kid it was really gross stuff so that's what I uh, wanted to go a little bit more in detail with it's very tricky when you're doing this stuff with kids because it can either come off as offensive or just borderline gross so yeah you gotta be careful with um the little jokes you put in there here and there because like total drama did it pretty well in my opinion because because you know all of them were like the same age and a lot of them liked each other a lot of it was consensual and a lot of it wasn't which was another problem with that show okay let's get back to the rest of the video like tori and jake's play date for example okay like when tori and jake go on a date with each other they're forced to go on a date with each other because they're seeing partners for the play they're doing y'all know that entire situation where andre and beck played their kids so two boys start hitting on them at the bar that they went to and they start to sing a song to get them to leave them alone okay it's not a bar it, it is part of it was a bar okay we we, we know this we know this y'all ain't sleep Software. How do teens have cool hangout spots like this? Because we did not <laughs> when I was a teenager. And I live in a big city. Sing a song to get them to lead to my... This, this burnt tongue, y'all. This is not it. <laughs> so back, I was trying to say they sing them a song to get them to leave them alone. And which they do. They ended up leaving the place. So next thing you know, Jade and Tori are doing the play. And those two dudes show up at their school and it scares them and then they run away but it was played off as very comical that is creepy that is not funny in a real life situation that was, was very um terrifying moving on next i remember there was an entire situation where robbie and cat were naked in public like what even was that? In conclusion, like I said earlier, Victorious is a weird show about weird people in weird situations created by a weird freaking man. This show is a hot freaking man. Thank you guys for watching this video. Seriously, it took everything out of me to get this one done because my mouth is hurting me so bad. I feel like I just keep slurring my words. So I'm just going to cut this short. I just wanted to make a nice little short video for you guys because you guys know I haven't really been too active on here. And I'm trying to do better. I'm trying to do better about that. Don't forget my new merch is here. Link to it will be down below. All my social media handles will be down below. If you guys want to find another way you can support me, in my career as this entrepreneur entertainer um support me on patreon most expensive tier is five dollars cheapest is one i post a lot of exclusive behind the scenes content over on there that I don't really see the light of day over here on this channel or it won't come to this channel for a while also i have a web series called the progenies the progenies is a descendants fan series it is race bent in yeah go watch it if you were disappointed with descendants go watch the prize news we try to fix a lot of the mess that was in there uh i love you guys thank you guys so much for watching and have a good night Just blow your mind, but a
cup by dealing three at a time. Bubbles will smile while kicking your butt, and blossom will leave them out of their rut. Cherishing power, plus two of a kind. Both wanna save the world before bad times. From towns from Memphis, New York to LA, the Powerpuff girls are just here to stay.